To realize its ambition to turn Mars into a colony, what SpaceX needs more than temporary tents is solid and spacious factories. That is why SpaceX has undertaken plans to expand its production infrastructure Star Factory, taking the manufacturing of Starship to a new high. And if you already know Majestic Tesla Gigafactory, where 5,000 electric vehicles are produced per week, you'll definitely be impressed to know that SpaceX's Star Factory will be much more insane. This impressive expansion of the new Star Factory serves as evidence of Elon Musk's far-reaching vision, establishing a solid foundation for the development of the world's largest spacecraft, Starship. Stay tuned as we dive into this episode of Alpha Tech. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, has long been driven by a grand vision of enabling multiplanetary life. Musk believes that establishing a colony on Mars is crucial for the survival of humanity in the face of future potential catastrophes on Earth. In this year's International Aviation Congress, Elon Musk confirmed the plan to produce 1,000 Starship spacecraft by SpaceX. He stated that SpaceX is planning to launch thousands of Starships each year, aiming to send approximately 1 million tons of cargo to Mars to aid in the construction and maintenance of a self-sustaining city on the planet. In the past, he has also likened the spacecraft to modern Noah's Arks, a vessel that would save humans from catastrophe and bring them to a new world while the home planet is healing. Well, the amount of 1,000 spacecraft is certainly not small. So Elon Musk has upped his rocket manufacturing strategy to make the unimaginable a reality. Furthermore, the current situation of production Starship is akin to running a marathon against time. Shortly after the successful integration launch of Starship for the second time, Elon Musk quickly announced that the hardware for the next flight would be ready in the next three to four weeks. It becomes evident that this early revelation is not only for the third flight, but also serves as a sign that many more schedules are approaching. Plus, with SpaceX's ongoing process of upgrading the spacecraft version from Starship V1 to Starship V2, this necessitates a more professional, larger-scale production and testing system than the makeshift tents used before, ensuring readiness for crucial missions in the future. This dynamic situation at the build site reflects the concerted efforts and urgency in constructing the Star Factory. The Star Factory signifies the future of SpaceX's manufacturing capabilities, designed to meet the expanding requirements of the company's ambitious projects. SpaceX initiated the construction of Phase 1 of the Star Factory alongside Manufacturing Tent 3 at the beginning of 2022. This year, the next phases have also begun. Old structures were demolished one by one to make space for Star Factory, followed by the cleaning process, pouring concrete, building the frame, and finally, installing the walls and roof. They have completed nearly half of this massive construction, and what we can observe for the Star Factory building is an L-shaped structure. The surrounding area is remarkably tidy, with only one production tent once still standing. However, this remaining tent is slated for demolition soon to finalize the construction of the entire new factory. It would not be surprising if it becomes operational by late 2024, marking a new chapter in SpaceX's rocket production endeavors. Once SpaceX's new factory is finished, it is estimated to cover an expansive area of up to 60,000 square meters, four to five times the total area of the previous tent structures. Regarding the height of the buildings, they will likely be designed to be equivalent to the height of the tents, and there will be taller buildings dedicated to manufacturing and researching higher components. In comparison, an approximate 28,000 square meter building would have almost two and a half times as much covered floor space as Starbase's three tents, all of which can theoretically be used for ring and nose section assembly. In fact, with a mostly flat roof, SpaceX could feasibly expand most stacks by a ring or two which would reduce the number of sections and thus stacking options needed to assemble a ship or booster. Meanwhile, the tents are designed separately. Each tent will be responsible for producing a certain part of the Starship. One tent houses a full array of Raptor engines dedicated to the propulsion section of the spacecraft and booster. The middle tent serves as the assembly point for the rings, sections, and domes, shaping the body and fuel tanks of the Starship. This tent, however, is compact to the extent that assembling the ring segments on top of the domes is often done outdoors. Subsequently, each section is prepared for its specific role with a series of cutouts, plumbing systems, and reinforcement materials. The third tent is then exclusively reserved for nose cone production. The nose section is fitted with a heat shield before rolling out. With this process, SpaceX has to manufacture the main components of the ship and booster simultaneously on the ground 
and then all of them are brought together in the mega bay for final assembly. The segments are stacked, welded, and then finished, including wings and propulsion systems. However, this production process is not continuous, and the speed of Starship production has yet to be maximized comprehensively. Besides, the old tents have an arch-shaped structure, so SpaceX can't optimize the working space and this structure makes it difficult to accommodate large parts. Such large parts will often be taken outside the tent, causing them to be affected by the weather. But the most important factor will still be production technology. The current production process still has many manual steps like welding or bending, so the speed is quite slow. But despite these challenges, the tents still serve as a perfect choice during the initial developmental stages of Starship. It is through these makeshift tents that SpaceX took its initial steps towards achieving the milestones that have paved the way for more modern factory construction as seen today. This transition process was undoubtedly not an easy feat. To succeed, Elon Musk needs a production line, a challenge he's familiar with from his painful yet renowned experiences expanding Tesla's manufacturing scale a few years ago. Creating a mass production line for spacecraft is no walk in the park. According to Musk, establishing a production line is a staggering thousand times more difficult than designing the rocket itself. Production is at least a thousand percent harder than creating something, he complains. If you're just trying to create something, it can essentially be done by an engineering team. But if you really want to create something with reasonable mass, you have to manufacture the machine that makes the machine. In mathematical terms, it's much more complex than the machine itself. Fortunately, Musk's prior experiences at Tesla have provided valuable insights into tackling this challenge. In the realm of car production, Musk notes that building an automobile production line is a whopping 10,000 times more challenging than designing the car itself. Notably, when SpaceX embarked on constructing the Starship factory, Musk and the team didn't wait for a large factory to be built before commencing rocket production. Instead, they began outdoors, later upgrading the Starship production line with specialized tents utilizing shipping containers as their foundations. A strategy learned from Tesla's experience when dealing with overflow in Model 3 car production. Musk's unconventional thinking also played a role, as he believes that if conventional approaches render a mission impossible, unconventional thinking is imperative. This led to the rapid construction of a giant tent in the Tesla parking lot within two weeks, executed by a company called Spring Structures. This approach allowed them to integrate new production technologies like their Gigapress, which were too large to fit into an existing factory floor. After that, Elon Musk immediately applied this production method to the rocket facility at Starbase. These tents have been side by side with Starship and SpaceX for a long time, and finally, it's time to bid them farewell. When tent sprung structures can be indefinite solutions for things like automotive manufacturing, Starship production is one case in which a more permanent flat ceiling building is undeniably superior. With more than two years of experience and data to draw from, SpaceX may finally be confident enough in its present day Starship production methods to commit to the construction of Starbase's next evolution. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.